Hey everybody, welcome back. So, um, very good popular response to yesterday's video. I know a lot of people got the brand, uh, the Gemini foil press for uh, Christmas. Congratulations. Um, and some of you have had it and just too afraid to get it out of the box, which it can be intimidating. There's a lot to learn, a lot of mistakes to be made. And so I'm hoping that I can help walk you through that process. So for today, we are going to be working on stamp and cuts. So that means that um, these designs will foil and then uh, the die actually cuts out. So I wanna show you that, but before we do that, let me give you a quick lesson on some of the different foils. So there are a lot of different foiling machines out there, a lot of different foiling companies. Again, this has to be heat activated foil. The difference is this foil has adhesion built into it. It's not the same as some of the other foils that are out on the market. So the companies that you can get are um, Toto Foil, Spellbinders Foil, the Spellbinders uh, Glimmer Machine, um, Go Press and Foil, the Gemini Foil, and now we also have uh, We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill. All of these foils will work in this hot foiling system, okay? Um, I want to talk today about the difference between some of these foils and the Gemini foil. I will tell you the Gemini foil, in my opinion, is the top when it comes to using the hot foiling machines because it works at a very low heat and it works very quickly. So um, it is a little difficult to find. You really kind of need to go to Crafter's Companion to get it. I know HSN carries some of it. There are two types when you purchase this. Um, there is a purple box and a pink box. The purple box is paper craft foil. The pink box is multi-surface foil. The paper craft foil is going to work on all of your normal paper, which most of us are going to be using on 99.9% .9 of our projects, okay? The multi-surface foils are what you're going to use if you're going to be foiling um, leather or cork or anything that's not paper that you need a better adhesion on, okay? Canvas, things like that. However, the multi-surface foil will work on paper. So if you cannot find paper craft foil, you can use multi-surface foil. Um, it's just the paper craft foil may not adhere to the other things, okay? Um, if you're not sure which is which when you go to open your box, and you'll notice that I purchased both of these. They're the exact same color. They're both berry. I do like that Gemini puts the names of the colors on the box. They put a little swatch on the side. Um, some of the other foiling companies do not do that. So if you're doing a lot of foiling and they're all over your desk and you're like, wait, what is this? Uh, it does make it easier. I want you to look at the rolls here. Okay. One has a white cork roll. One has a... Uh, a wood, a brown cork roll, okay? Uh, a natural cork roll. White is always going to be your paper craft, um, and then the natural is always going to be your multi-surface. So if you ever get them mixed up, that's how you know, okay? So just to show you the difference, I am going to demonstrate both of these. I will do one at a time so we don't mix them up. And I'm just going to do uh, regular foiling at first. I'm not going to do the stamp and cut. We will get into the foiling stamp and cut dies here in just a second. I'm also going to show you the difference. I showed this yesterday um, using some of the other hot foils. This is Glimmer Cobalt Blue. I wrote the name down on there. Now, the Glimmer foil you can normally pick up. I think it's easier to find, like Hobby Lobby has it. Um, if you have specialty scrapbook stores or um, stamping stores near you. I'm not talking big box stores because like Michael's doesn't carry it. AC Moore is going out of business. Joann's doesn't carry it. They do carry a uh, foil quill. We are memory capers foil quill. Um, all right. So I want to show you what the difference is in temperatures and timing here because it does make a difference. The Gemini foil is a lot easier. I know for all of the other foiling companies, I need to be at a higher temperature at a longer time frame. So I have my Gemini foil press here, power buttons on, it's on low, the light is green. I have 15 seconds on the timer, okay? So what I would normally do, and I'm just gonna do, like I said, um, regular foiling here. Get this one. Let's this one say happy birthday. I have quite a few happy birthdays we're going to do. I need to make birthday cards. Okay, so I believe that's pretty straight. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to use regular black cardstock. So the first one I'm going to use is um, 
I'm going to use the blue so you can see. Now, I know this is not going to foil well because with Spellbinders foil and Couture Creations foil, you need to be at medium and you need to be at 30 seconds. But I want to show you guys the difference here. So low, 15 seconds. We're going to hit start. Now off screen is my Gemini Junior. I know that some people have expressed that their regular Gemini is too tight and they've had problems with the adapter plate cracking. You need to contact Crafter's Companion if you're having issues with your um, machine if it's too tight. Okay, so we're going to run this through the machine and that's all I do is simply feed it through and I don't put any extra sandwiches or anything in there. Now, this is probably going to be underfoiled because it's generally not enough heat or time. Oh, there it is. It came right off. All right. So for the sake of saving paper, I'm going to show you what this looks like if we go to medium heat. And let's go to 30 seconds. Now, some of that foil has come off. That's okay. Okay. So we're going to, go, we're going to leave that there. I'm just flipping the paper over to the back side. We're going to wait till that turns green, and then we're going to start the timer. And then I'm going to show you the difference with the Gemini foil. And like I said, this is usually for the case for Glimmer foils, Go Press and foil, uh, We Are Memory Keepers foil, um, and Toto foil, because those foil companies just take a higher heat. Okay, so now we have 30 seconds. It's green. We're going to let that count down, and then we'll see how much better we get. I bet it foils a lot better. And I think a lot of the people that have frustrations with the machine are for this reason. Um, they know that they're using the correct foil, but they can't get the, the timing or the pressure correct. And so you get a lot of overfoiling or underfoiling. So just make notes on your boxes of foil, um, like I have on here, medium 30 seconds. Um, you know, I'll put that on here just so you know when you go to use these foils that they are going to foil a little differently. Notice when I put it back, I don't plug it back in until I'm ready to use it. This, I think, helps with my plate not warping. A lot of people have a problem with their plate warping, and I think it's because they put it right back in and it starts to get hot again. All right, so you can see already we have a lot better foiling, and the reason there's some patchiness is because, again, we had already run this through on this side. Um, but you can see much better using medium, 30 seconds on those foils. So my demonstration there was just that you have to really learn your foils and how they work, okay? I'm gonna go back to the Gemini foil though because I wanna show the difference between the multi-craft foil and the multi-surface foil and the regular paper foil. So this was the berry paper foil. This is Gemini. We're gonna go back to low here. So we need to plug our thing back in. We wanna go to low. It's green, it's ready to go. And we only need about 15 seconds with this Gemini foil. This is the regular paper craft foil. This is not the um, multi-surface foil. And again, just another piece of black paper here. Top plate, hit start. And we're going to run that through the machine. Notice when I grab my machine, I grab in the top left corner and the bottom right corner. There's no heat emanating there, so I'm really not going to burn my fingers by carefully grabbing it that way. Okay, we should have pretty good foiling here. Oops, let me undo that. And we want to give that just a second to cool down. And perfect foiling in 15 seconds on low heat setting. That is what makes the Gemini foil superior. It is a lot easier to use. 
Now I want to show that same demonstration with the uh, multi-surface foil, and we'll see what we get. I think with the multi-surface foil, we do need to go a little longer on time, just because, again, there's a different adhesive on this foil, which makes it... Um, easier for it to stick to other um, surfaces, which is why it's called multi-surface, but we'll try it out here. But I think if I recall correctly, and I don't have it written in front of me, I need to put a little bit more time on this. Okay, it's green. I'm gonna hit start. And I am using, these are Crafters Companion hot foil dies, hot foil stamps as well. They're not dies. We call them dies because they're made out of the same material dies are made out of. But these actually don't cut into your paper unless it's a stampin' uh, cut die. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, we'll see how this one turns out. Just like I suspected, multi-surface foils do need to go in in a little bit of a longer period of time and a longer temperature. So let me show you here. Let me get the book out because it does tell you in the owner's manual. And you want to keep this book. Don't throw this out. Okay, so multi-surface rolls, um, it says leather or fabric, but you want the temperature on high with multi-surface rolls. So we're gonna change this to high, and we're gonna do 15 seconds again. So we're gonna let that wait until that turns green. I know it's hard for you guys to see, there you go. So you can see it's red, it's not ready to go in temperature yet. It's gonna take a minute for it to heat up. I'm gonna put the timer on 15 seconds. And I like to put my plate on because I do think it helps to heat that up. I know somebody did ask that question yesterday. Okay, so we're trying multi-surface here. And I just wrote on the back of this, this is the uh, paper foil. And what I'll do is I'll make a note to myself on my boxes to help me that on the paper craft foil, we're okay there. I mean, you can put low. And it's 15 seconds based on a regular size stamp. Um, hot foil stamp. If you have to go to um, a larger die, it's more surface area, so it takes longer to heat up. So I'm putting on here high. This is the multi-surface roll high. I very rarely use my multi-surface rolls because I don't do a lot of mixed media things. But it is a neat concept to have that. Like a lot of people like to foil ribbon and things like that. That came out perfectly. So once this is ready to go, it will uh, beep at us. While we're waiting for that to heat up, let me explain to you the difference with um, the stamp and cut um, dies. So again, there are instructions in the book here on how to use the foil stamp and cut dies. I have my own instructions. I'm gonna hold that up if you guys wanna grab a piece of paper and write this down. This is for my machine on how I use the stamp and cut dies. Now, if you read their instructions, that's ready to go. Their instructions tell you you need two metal shims. Well, those metal shims come from your Gemini machine. So I found a way to do it that's a little easier. If you wanna write this down, you start with a paper shim, then your stamp and cut die face up, your foil ugly side um, face up, the paper to be foiled, uh, metal shim, a paper shim, and a top plate. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of this. Let's run this through. This is again the multi-surface foil. And we should have pretty good coverage here. You always want to give it just a second to cool down um, because that allows the adhesion to happen between the foil and the paper. 
All right, and you can see much better foiling. And again, we had already tried to foil with this, which is why there are blank spots. It has nothing to do with the heat or the timer. It's because we tried to reuse the foil. Okay, so that worked out pretty good. I'm going to um, move this back down to low, and it's going to tell me it's cooling, all right? Now, this machine also has an auto shutoff feature where it's too hot, and what you need to do is you need to remove your plate. Okay, so as we unplug this plate, it'll say cooling, and we'll try it back in a few seconds, okay? So, um, as I was talking about before, were the difference between the dies. There are a lot of stamp companies out there, hot foiling companies, I should say. That means there are a lot of dies. Um, I do like the Gemini, the Crafter's Companion dies. They work well because they were made for this machine. They are a little bit thinner. They don't need as much pressure. You don't need to shim them, things like that. Um, the other companies that are out there are the Toto Machine, which is a European company. Those dies are definitely not recommended because they are too thick. You can use other hot foiling dies. We are going to use one of the Spellbinders dies here. Um, here's the um, Spellbinders um, little fonts here, Everyday Sentiments it's called. So, um, And it comes with a die, so you can cut the sentiments out, and then these are your sayings. And I picked that up at Hobby Lobby. I have another one here we're going to try out. It's a scripty love. And again, these are hot foiling stamping dies. That means they are designed to imprint an image through the foil by heating the foil. They are not designed to cut. Um, so these are all the different ones I have. I pulled out all the happy birthdays. Now the ones that are dark gray that I hold in my hands, these are stamp and cut, okay? What that means is they will foil stamp the image here and then they will cut. So this will cut an inside frame and it will cut an outside frame. Same with this one. This one is the butterflies that I have here. And then here's a smaller butterfly. And you probably got this one with your machine as a uh, sample. So I'm gonna show you how to use those. I am going to use the Gemini paper craft foil just to make it easier on everybody. And then we'll go to some of these other ones. So while this is cooling, I'm going to take this off. I do have a couple of pieces of foil cut down. And I just take my magnetic tweezers, pull that up, take it over to my little silicone pad, and let that drop down. Now, my instructions that I have made, again, just going back and showing you the instructions they have here. Tells you here basically to... Um, Put your shim or put your metal shim down, which I'll show you in a second. Then put your um, stamp and die, your foil, your paper, another metal shim, and your cutting shim. Well, when I did that, I just got way too much pressure, um, and it really didn't sound good going through the machine. So I have a little bit different way that I do mine. So the first thing I have is paper shim, and this is just a regular um, paper shim. It's just a regular cardstock, okay? We'll see if this is cooled down yet. Now it's cool, so we're okay there. We have that on low. Then we're gonna do our, um, let's see, can we cut out one of these happy birthdays? Let's see how that works out. Now that's gonna be too big, Never mind. We're gonna do our stamp and cut face up. We're going to do our foil so this is regular gold Gemini paper craft foil, face up. We're gonna do our cardstock. Okay, and then I use metal plate that came with my Gemini Junior. I put washi tape around mine so that it doesn't cut me. That's your metal shim, okay? And then if you wanted to, you could do another paper shim. I actually think I am gonna do, sorry, piece of paper over there, then my metal shim, and then my top plate, okay? So because we are using the paper craft foil, we're gonna go 15 seconds. I don't think it's large enough to be a medium one. We'll start that out with 15 on low and see what we get. You always want to make sure that this edge, nothing's over this edge. So your plates, all those need to be past that because if that goes over the edge when you're feeding it through the machine, it could jump and you could crack your plates or destroy your Gemini. So you want to make sure everything's lined up correctly. 
And again, you want to follow the directions that um, come in the book and find what works for you. Paper shims, I like to use over the um, magnetic shim or the metal shims just to start out because paper is very pliable. If you go back to some of my older videos, you see I do a lot of experimenting with shims and magnetic plates and um, metal plates and things like that. Okay, all right, so I can see that this cut through very nicely. Okay, there's nothing foiled on here because there wasn't anything to be foiled. So it did its job with cutting and I just need to find an edge to lift. Okay, and you can see it foiled that frame beautifully. Okay, now in this case, I have a tiny bit of overfoiling in some of the areas. I probably would just remove one of the shims. Okay, so let me show you that again. Let's move to a different die. I'm gonna leave my paper shim in there. And let's do this frame. And we're gonna use another piece of the paper craft foil. This is a nice hot pink. Oh, it's not gonna fit. Let's try this one. I think this one is called Cerise. Yes, Cerise. Okay, and then for this one, I'm not gonna put the second shim on there. We're just gonna do one shim on the bottom. And all that paper shim does is press down on the top of the die so that we can get the foiling and the cutting at the same time. Um, and then we're just gonna do our little metal shim, our top plate. We're plugged in, low is set to green, 15 seconds, press start. And again, these are all dark gray because they are cutting um, they have cutting lines on them from Crafter's Companion. I don't know if Spellbinders has any. I don't have any of the Spellbinders if they do have any cut and foil ones. Okay, let me make sure this is all past the line. Now in the book, it says to use a metal shim underneath and a metal shim on top. I like the metal shim on top because I feel like it protects that top plate so that I don't get any cut marks in it. It's not gonna hurt anything if you get any cut marks in it. It's just personal preference. You can purchase a new platform and new plates as well. You, you know, so if things like that happen, it's fine. Okay, so this one is a little bit under foiled. So on this one, I probably would have needed two shims. It's actually not too bad though. So I'm really not gonna complain about that. So we move on to try a different one. And then what you can do is save this center piece and foil a sentiment on it. So let me just show you that. So where's my little, I had a tiny happy birthday. So I'm gonna do regular foiling on here. So that's just the uh, foil stamp die. The foil's already on there, the little square that was cut out, and just the top plate low, 15 seconds. And then we'll run that through the Gemini Junior and see what we get. If you're new to my channel, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, there will be a little subscriber button that'll come up in the bottom corner there. You can click that, and anytime I post a new video, 
it will uh, notify you. This actually says heartfelt sympathy. Now here you can see our foil folded on itself. So that's not no good. That's what's going to happen is there's going to be a blank spot there. Yeah, see, no bueno. So we want to make sure that our foil is always straight. Let's try that one again. We will use the uh, gold foil. Make sure that it is completely covered. You want to try to trim your foil down to the size of your hot stamp die um, because you don't want any overfoiling, which is excess foil. So we have it on low. We have it on 15 seconds. This is the Gemini Gold Paper Craft Foil. We're going to hit start. We're going to try that again. And then we'll move into some of these uh, happy birthdays and these butterflies and see how they come out. And this is a crafter's companion one. I am going to use a Couture Creations one or a Go Press and Foil one in a second. You'll see the difference. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then we can use the frame and cut that out. Now, in terms of my paper, I do like to use, I know it's kind of a waste, but I'm not very good at centering. Yes, there are grid lines on here that you can use to center it. But let's say I had put this on and it was crooked or wasn't centered. Well, I know I can cut this down to size or put a die around it and cut it around, um, which is why I like to use it. And this is just a big pack of, of scrap paper that I use. All right, so I want to show you guys using another um, stamp and cut. We're going to use the butterflies because everybody likes the butterflies. So for this, we're going to put our paper shim down. Okay. Our stamp and cut die. We want our foil. I'm going to go back in and use, what do we have? Cut. I've pre-cut some of this foil. Here is, is this big enough? Just barely. Okay, this is the turquoise foil. Yes, turquoise foil. Again, Gemini paper craft foil. I'm going to put our cardstock on there. And you want to make sure that there's no wrinkles. Everything lays down flat. Then we're going to do our metal shim. I'm not going to put another paper shim on this. We'll see how it does. We'll do our metal shim and then our top plate. And then we turn it on and let it cook for 15 seconds. This is a medium die, so we might need to go up in time. I think it's uh, from 15 seconds, it goes to 30 seconds, but we'll see how it works out. And using one shim, it did cut all the way through. And like I said, if you watch some of my older videos, I really struggled learning the different foils, the different shims, and now I've kind of made notes to myself, and that came out pretty well. A little under foiling here. Probably should have used another shim. Let's do it again. Let's do two shims this time and see what we get. So we're going to leave that there, piece of gold foil here. Different foils, different um, card stocks that you're using are all going to affect your outcome. Keep that in mind. Um, and then we want, uh, want another paper shim. I'm just going to put another piece of paper over it so we have two. seconds cook that 
I'm going to open up this Spellbinders Glimmer. This is uh, the word love. We're going to try this out. You know it's Spellbinders because it has that copper color. Stampin' Cut work with two paper shims instead of one. So there's the first shim. You can see it cut all the way through. That's actually really pretty, and we can save that and reuse that. And I keep my um, butterfly foils because we can always refoil those. I showed those in a different video. And you can see using two shims... Seems to be what works best with my machine and my the papers that I'm using today. So here's the first one we did. It came out fine. It's a little underfoiled in the middle here. And then this one came out perfectly. And then up top here we have a little bit of overfoiling. It's really easy to get off. You just take a mono sand eraser and you just erase that. And it will take all of that excess foil off of there. Really simple, really easy to do. All right, so let's try out the Spellbinders. This is a regular die. Put that in the middle there. Now, if I'm going to use the Stampin', I'm sorry, if I'm going to use the um, Gemini foil, I'm going to use some of this pink here. I wanted to also show you keeping your foils in the box and taking care of them is also going to affect your foiling. This foil, you can see on the edges here, it kind of got bent and beat up. And what happens then is that foil flakes off. When you go to use this, then you're not going to have good foiling. So you always want to make sure that you take care of your foil and um, try to keep it from getting scratched and so on. We're going to use a piece of glossy cardstock. This is the same glossy cardstock I used yesterday because I think it looks really good when it's foiled. Trying to feel and make sure I have that on the edge there. Okay, since this is um, the Gemini foil, we're going to leave it at low, 15 seconds. Let that cook. I don't need an extra shim because I'm not cutting anything. But I'm also going to show you this using the Go Press and Foil and, and how we have to change the heat settings. It has nothing to do with the die, the Stampin' die has to do with the foil settings. Okay, so it looks like we have enough pressure there. That's good. Give that a second to cool. And then reveal. Look at that. Perfectly foiled. And that's what the difference is with that Gemini foil. It really is good foil. They really took their time to make sure that they researched everything when they launched this machine. Okay, so I'm going to try that again. But we're going to use the Go Press and Foil. This is, um, now my box tells me medium 30 seconds. This is called Pink Purple. Oh, how um, imaginative. <laughs> Again, we want to cut it to about the size of our stamping die. So when you guys are looking online for hot foils and dies, I'll link some for you. You want to make sure it says heat activated foil or hot foil stamps. Um, if you just search hot foil dies, you may end up getting regular dies. And you can use regular dies in here. That's a video for another day. Okay, so now I want to move my machine to medium. 
Notice how it is red now. It's not ready to go. And I want to go to 30 seconds because I know if I try to do this at low, we're going to have the same results we did the first time we tried the other foils, which is going to be under foiling. The foiling is not going to hit, stick. So this is telling me it's warm enough. It's ready to go. It's at green. See that? So now we're going to go 30 seconds. And this is using the Go Press and Foil Heat Activated Foil. So I wanted to show you guys there's a lot of options you have in terms of using hot foil dyes, um, different companies, and also in using um, the different kinds of stamp and cut dyes and regular dyes, what kind of sandwiches and shims you should have, and also the different foiling companies. So there's a lot of choices you have here. You just want to make sure you keep notes. And if you don't want to keep notes, then always use, just use the Gemini foil, which is the easiest. And again, after I believe it's 25 minutes of use, the machine will shut down to allow itself to cool down. I don't plug this in until I'm ready to foil. And I have not, thank goodness, knock on wood, have any issues with my plate warping. I know a lot of people have had issues with their plate warping. And I think it's because they leave that plugged in and it stays hot. So it just starts to curl up. Okay, and this is using the Go Press and Foil. And all I did was switch my timing. So here's the Gemini foil. We did low 15 seconds. Here's the Go Press and foil. I did medium 30 seconds. And those came out gorgeous. They're really, really pretty. Let's do another stamp and cut. We're going to change our machine back down to low. It's going to say it's ready or it's going to say it needs to cool down. There is tape on the back of this, which is now stuck to my plate. To get that up. Just comes right up. You always want to make sure your dies are face up. You don't want them face down. You don't want them digging into this silicone mat. You don't want that getting cut up. Um, actually, I'm going to do medium. I'm going to do uh, this stamp and cut frame. Did we do this one? We did do that one. Oh, we didn't do the little butterfly. Let's do the little butterfly. So this is again a stamp and cut. So we need our shim. Where did I put my paper shim? Okay, so paper shim. Oops. I keep all my foils. Paper shim, stamp and cut die, face up. Okay, we want a piece of foil. I am going to use the, um, let's use the glimmer foil again. Well, actually, we'll use this Go Press and Foil. So we want it at medium. I tried to be really good today about having all my foils ready for you guys. I did okay, I think. Okay. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, we'll cover that. We're gonna use a regular piece of black card stock. I'm gonna do two shims because it did seem to work better last time with two shims. So I'll just add another piece of paper on there. Okay, we want to use our metal plate. We want 30 seconds on the timer. So medium heat is now green. We have 30 seconds on the timer. We have our sandwich ready to go. But this time we're using go press and foil. So why we change foils, we need to change timing and change heat. If you like this video, I always appreciate you guys' thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to put them down below. You can also email me at Nancy Stamps, the number 15, so Nancy Stamps 15 at Gmail. I'll be happy to help in any way I can.
Okay, so two shims worked. It's the hardest part is getting that clean cut edge to release itself. It did okay, probably because of the shims, we should have done a little bit longer turn on the foil. Let's try that again. We wanna make sure we do it right. And I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna use this one that already pre-cut. We're gonna just put a piece of foil in there with that. Is this gonna fit? Nope, too small. I'm going to plug that back in. I'm going to leave it for medium. I'm going to do 40 seconds. Come on. There we Now this is already cut. This is already cut, so I'm just gonna line this in there. Hopefully I line it up correctly. We'll see how that works. And put another paper shim over top of that. We don't really need it to cut at this point, we just need it to foil. I'm going to do 40 seconds on this and see if that works out better. And so here you guys can see all of the stamp and cuts we did. And for the most part, they came out pretty good. So it just takes time practicing with your sandwich, practicing with your foils. And just take notes and see how it comes out. I think it moved a little. Let's see. Oh yeah, it moved. It moved. I should have put a little tape on it. Well, let's see if 40 seconds, oh, 40 seconds worked way better. So at least I know that part. So when I'm using the Stampin' Cut and a different kind of foil, I should use 40 seconds instead of regular 30 seconds. So at least I have that idea. So I know when I'm using regular foiling, 30 seconds is the correct timer. When I'm doing stamp and cut, it's 40 seconds. And again, the last page of your book has um, a section for notes. So I can write down like any other foil except for Gemini, 40 seconds, or write it on the box. Um, so keep an eye out, guys. If you like this video, again, I appreciate your thumbs up. The next video I'm gonna do is on how do you foil all of this waste, all of this negative foil. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be the next video that I film for you guys. If you click the subscribe button and the bell, you'll get a notification when that goes live. Also check out my playlist. I'll link yesterday's video and the playlist for you at the end of this video. So that way if you're new to the machine or you're just getting reacquainted with it, you can go back and watch some of my videos um, on that. So thanks for watching guys. Again, here's what we did today. And any questions, post your comments or questions. I will try to link everything in the description for you. But thanks for watching and keep on foiling. Bye-bye.